So I'd like to introduce you to the most loud-mouthed, over-the-top, offensive real estate moguls you're ever gonna meet, Ben Mala. I bought it because I'm a big, fat mother What about your business? That's what you worry about. He is your true rags-to-riches story, having grown up in an abusive household in the projects of Queens, New York, without any formal education. Yet despite that, he's been able to build a real estate empire now worth $500 million. And today we'll be able to see a day in the life as we follow him around and watch exactly how he builds his wealth year after year. Viewer discretion is advised. We're going to work, baby. We're going to go out and do some real estate management. Gotta constantly think about these are your assets, what's going on with them, what do they need, what can you do to improve them to make more money, what can you do to save money, and address any other issues that are going on. Mm -hmm. Whatever I can do to move forward, keep the portfolio moving forward to make money. When I was a kid, I just knew I wanted to get the hell out of New York City and get away from all the violence and crime and misery that I had to endure every single day. I just, I felt like I was living in a prison and I was surrounded by nothing but the worst of the worst people and I hated it. I knew I'd, I wanted to do something in life, but I just knew that New York and growing up around all that shit was just not the life I wanted to live. And I needed an escape and I did. You're out here in the field today, baby. Okay, <laughs> you're in real real estate. And here we are okay. at the heartbeat of John's Pass. Bought it on this phone. Really? In my car, driving down the street. 16, 18 million or something like that. Okay. It's worth double. I always found real estate to be just, you know, a simple business. You provide somebody some sort of real estate, they pay your rent. You know, you had certain obligations and responsibilities, but it was clear cut and simple. And you could have a lot of real estate paying you a lot of money at all these different locations without it taking up a lot of your time. And I've seen a lot of people doing it and I felt like I was smarter than them or I was willing to work harder than them. So I felt like that was a place for me. You know, and I started at the bottom, you know, but people don't realize you gotta put the time in. It's like going to college, you know? And I put the time in, and I felt that, well, if I can run all this shit for somebody else and make them a bunch of money, then my plan should be being able to own it myself. So, you know, that's the road I went down. Go get a white magic marker and make somebody, you know, you got artistic talent, and make these white, please. So like I said before, you know, this whole thing was empty. Since the place was built, never was rented. So, you know, he just made them into nice rooms. Wow. And, uh, you know, and it worked out great. Thing is, you know, not everybody wants to spend four, three, four, five hundred dollars a night across the street mm -hmm. on the sand. You know, yeah. not everybody can afford it. You know, but you can come here for half that price or less and be right across the street from the beach. I bought that building too. Once some zoning gets changed, is I'm gonna take this shell dirt lot which this property owns, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna add on to that building and build as many more hotel rooms there, retail on the bottom, that the city will permit me to do. And when something works in life, keep doing it. You know, you already have a proven track record, keep doing it. Yeah. Why try to reinvent the wheel? I like to be involved, you know. If you're gonna be in a game, play the game. I like to get out here, touch the real estate, look at it. I got a lot of experience that they don't have you know, I have ideas, uh, you know, so whenever I go to a property, you know, I like to also make sure that I know I've thought of everything I could possibly do to improve the property and add value to it. He's gonna give me seven rooms here, two next doors, nine, and yeah. the bathroom will be 10. We're gonna invest at least 300 grand minimum. Sure. And then we'll have 10 more rooms, but in this area, with these things up and running, you know, they're probably worth two to two and a half million dollars hmm. when it's done. I yeah. think converting retail into residential is what's needed right now. It's just, there's not enough housing. And if you're able to take something like this that wouldn't 
already be rented? I mean, it makes sense for everybody involved. These aluminum. We're gonna scrap all that for you. This is money, money, money. My father used to tell me when he was alive, he'd say, listen, and I always listened to him when, on this one thing. It's the only thing I ever listened to. He said, listen, when you have a problem, think about what I would do and then do the opposite. Because he grew up in a depression. Play everything safe. Don't take no chances. Don't risk nothing. No risk, no reward. This is the parking. Okay, parking is big money, especially in a major tourist location. So, you know, that brings in most of our profit right there because parking garage is very low maintenance. Yeah, who does a tenant? Yeah. The boat's a tenant. We got fishing boats wow. that normally are parked here. They're taking people out on fishing tours. We got dolphin tours. We've got, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. The boardwalk itself, look at that giant dolphin that just popped up over there. See him? Look. My first property was 20% um, down on a really rough place. I mean, it was like a boarded up crack house. To have one unit below, one unit above, the place was boarded up, nobody wanted nothing to do with it, and um, I went to a hard money guy, uh, I put 20% down, he floated me the rest of the money, I closed the deal, did everything I could to get resources together to fix the place up, we spent it as little as much as money as much as possible. Once I had a track record, the hard money guy would start loaning me more money to fix them up too. He would give me like three loans on the same property from start to finish. So he made money, I made money, and it all worked out. And I just kept buying up all this shit nobody else wanted. All the places that just sat dormant on the courthouse steps nobody would bid on. I mean, I would buy them, I'd fix them, I'd rent them, I'd refinance them. I keep them for a while and eventually sell them. When I bought it, it had, uh, it had a considerable amount of tenants in it. It had a considerable amount of vacancy in it. And it was kind of shabby and mismanaged. It was taken, you know, in a distress sale. So we came in and we just got our hands dirty. Get in there, start tweaking stuff, managing it better, uh, looking at the expenses, rewriting the units, converting space to hotel rooms, doing everything we can to add value to it, to increase the NOI. How are you? How are you? Yogurt City, baby. Yogurt City. Home of the crazy chickens. Chicken looks like it's been around the world. We even have the mini chickens now. You know, I like to know my tenants, you know, and let them know I want to work with them. So these people came here. They already were here when I bought the place. They were kind of struggling a little. Yeah. I told them. I'd even pay for it. It looks like they had it done. Put in a window on the sidewalk so you can surf in the street. Ah. Okay? What it cost me? A few hundred bucks, big deal. Yeah. Anyway, the people were doing this business started picking up. I was encouraging them to do certain things here for some furniture outside. Everything was going good. I said, you know, we're doing pretty good now. We think about opening up another location. Great. I got a spot for you in my other shopping center. What'd they do? They took whatever money they had put together. They went over to my shopping center, they leased the space, they built it out, they're growing, I'm growing. You know, it's good when you can work with people, okay, for the, for the same purpose, for everybody to benefit. We're out here managing our assets. You never can build on the beach, you build on the beach. Because this cost of the value of the property versus the, co the cost of construction is just, you know, you make a fortune. Primarily, all the money I made was always came through a refinance. I would never touch the money from a sale. Every time I did a transaction, I would 1031 to another transaction, defer the gains, buy the property, then stabilize the property, and then refinance the property, and then take that money and put it in my pocket. I bought hotels, you know, for 18, 20 million bucks, but I got loans on them for 25 to 30. So I've already, you know, done refinances where I've made money on properties, you know, without selling them. And borrowing money from the bank is a non-taxable event. Welcome to Treasure Bay Resort and Marina. We bought this property about a couple of months ago, and we're here making improvements every day. What's unique about this property is that you got the a beach across the street. That's actually a public beach, so it's easy access to everybody. 
in the back, we have a boat club mm. where you can come and rent a boat and cruise around the, you know, the Gulf and the Intercoastal. So it's got front and it's got back. Water front, water back. The guy that does the boat rentals was actually utilizing a room. A room. The room is worth a quarter million dollars. So we came up with a solution. That's his office. Ah, oh, wow. We're even pumping AC in there for him. So we got a quarter million dollar room now back in our possession. And we probably spent about 10 grand doing this. I mean, I'm always looking for a deal. Every morning I wake up, I got a few hundred emails of stuff that's for sale in the market all over the country. And I delete 90% of it. And then I got to get on the phone. And I got to start making offers. And I got to start doing due diligence. Right now, there's three different buildings in a package I want to go look at all over, you know, throughout the state. Um, you know, you got to be constantly looking because those deals, if it's a good deal, it'll be snatched up. When I yeah. first bought this place, right, I had a free breakfast. Let's face it, you know, we're on the beach. Yeah. All right. The free breakfast is probably costing us anywhere from ten to $15,000 a month with food and personnel. You don't need it. All right. I'm sorry. You're on vacation. You know, go out and have breakfast. So basically, that saved us a lot of money right off the bat. Yeah, I expect the hotel to probably, once it's stabilized, uh, I would think it's gonna make a couple of million a year. Who does the operations? How do you find those people? I got a guy that's head, head guy of hotels. He pretty much got the finger on the button of all my hotels. Okay. And then he's got managers under him that he delegates to. Sure. You know, but um, he has a very, very impressive track record. So he was the professor at our school. We yeah. stole him from the school. Yeah. And then we started buying one, then we bought another, then we bought another, then we sold some, and we've done very well. Yeah. So I don't rock the boat, and I don't know anything about the hotel business. Hmm. I mean, I know the basics, I know the expenses, I know, you know, I can look at income and expenses, but operational-wise, it's a business. I'm not a business person, I'm a property owner. He runs a property so well that the properties generate enough income to pay for the improvements. Hmm. I don't get a cash flow, but I gotta come out the pocket to fix them up. Sure. Fine with me. Got it. Then when they're done being fixed up by the property's income, then we're in the gravy zone. Got it. I mean, you know, every property's different. You gotta look at that property and say, what can I do to make this a better place and make more money? That's what you gotta do, no matter what type of property it is. So every unit's identical here. There's no difference in any unit. Except some have a king bed, some have a double beds. And they all have this little mini kitchen huh. with a fridge, a microwave, a sink, Coffee maker, just like you like. You nah, can make your I rice coffee this. here. Tell it a closet door needs repair. It's gonna fall on somebody. Mentally, I don't think I could do it. There's so much, so many moving parts and something like this, and it's a real like people business. You own a business that comes with the real estate. So I think it's way more challenging. I mean, I didn't make it totally on my own. I had to work for other people and learn the business and how to manage their assets so one day I could own assets. <clears throat> well, people don't realize that when you work for somebody else, you got to make that person feel like they can't live without you. You got to get them right in the palm of your hand. Because once you do that, you got to make that transition from worker to partner. That's what I did. And then you're set because now you're in the driver's seat right there with them except you have all that financial backing to go with it so you can help them grow. The guy that I worked for, he never would have grown to the level that uh, we grew together. He grew to this huge level of owning, you know, whatever it was, thousands of apartments at the time because I was the one out there and I was motivated and I was finding deals and I was buying deals with him and fixing them up. And, and you know, he was included, but I was the driving force, you know. He was the car, but I was the driver. Now we're over here at the retail part of the portfolio. Okay. This is one of our retail centers. We've got great triple net tenants here. Discount stores are doing very well. The big department stores are getting hit, malls are getting hit, but typically the people that shop in these type of stores don't shop online. They're looking for a discount, they're looking for a bargain, and these stores happen to be doing really well. Now it's doing a lot better when my rates were lower. You know, my cash flow has gone down because my rates went up. I didn't fix my rate. But, you know, it's still a, definitely a strong, solid asset. You know, it's one of maybe seven or eight that we own. 
you know, pretty much these sizes are great as long as you maintain them, keep them looking good, keep them clean. I mean, you know, my income has gone way, way down, probably by about, you know, six million a year because of the interest rates. I didn't fix my rate. Now I'm subject to the raise in the Fed. The Feds keep raising the rates. And what am I going to do? So every day I'm trying to figure out ways to deal with the situation, how to improve cash flow. Now I'm going to start looking seriously at a lot of assets that don't make a lot of sense at today's interest rate and think about selling them. But then I have to look at my tax ramifications on that. If I don't 1031, are there deals out there to 1031 in? It's a juggling act. So right now I'm juggling. It's like a circus and I'm the juggler. There she is, baby, street legal, ready to rock and roll. This is what Graham Stephan should be driving. Oh my gosh. And this thing runs like a top. It, it, it's it's it, it, engine, trainee, brakes. The guy who built it did it, and it shoots the fire. The machine guns come up and shoot. Wow. I mean, it's loaded, it's perfect. I mean, I don't like to waste money. No, it's stupid to waste money. I mean, if you enjoy something that gives you pleasure in life and you want to spend the money, you do it, but you have to live within your means. You know, everybody needs a budget. I, even I need a budget. I fired my landscaper and ripped out all the goddamn grass, put fake grass in. I saved a couple of grand a month that guy was billing me for. It could be yours right now for only asking 299,000. There's one on Hemmings right now for 750,000. Look it up. For you, 250. Yeah, 250. I mean, I like toys, I like stuff, but right now I'm just, I'm getting too old. You know, I just sold my rolls for close to 400 grand. I mean, the Batmobile's worth, I'd sell that for a quarter million. The Bob Hope car, I'd sell for a quarter million. Um, you know, I had it up in the millions at one time. I just sold the water car for about a buck 50. Listen, I'm 57 years old now. These things are nice. I bought and sold cars. I couldn't count the number of cars I bought and sold. It's fun. I did charity work with them. But right now, my mind is focused on financial stability. Because when you got money, typically money can solve all your problems. So I don't need all this stuff anymore. I don't want the responsibility. After so many years, you get tired of worrying about stuff. You know, I'm not a real big hobbyist. And, uh, you know, I'd rather just liquidate what I don't need, start simplifying my life. I need to get my life in order, get rid of all the stuff I don't need, you know, and start thinking about a retirement. All right, we're here. Why? Because we're showing Mr. Stefan his new home. At the height of the market, this house is worth every bit of a thousand bucks a square foot, which would make it price at $12 million. Yeah. Today, you yeah. can buy it for 30% less. Now that the rates are double or triple, <clears throat> it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a very tough market right now. You gotta work very hard to find a deal. People haven't swallowed the fact that their property is not worth what it was a year ago. Simple as that. The seller's gotta realize that. Me as a seller, I have to realize it. You know, it's a hard thing to swallow. But, you know, right now we're in this weird zone right now. You know, where the numbers don't work, the numbers don't make sense. But if you're in a 1031 and you can have millions of dollars worth of taxable deferment, it makes sense to you. The lot is probably one of the biggest lots you're gonna find on this waterfront. Oh my gosh, look at this. Ready to go, fireplace, hurricane shutters on every yeah. window that could be affected by a hurricane. Whoa. Here's your office. Comes with a fireplace, <laughs> built in oh, wow. library shelves. Your own private bathroom here, your kitchen, your family room, your dining, uh, you got another dining area space over there. Look at this, they, they matched. Fireplaces. They match the paint with this. Let's try to hide it, it's smart. Why'd you buy the house in the you first know, place? You know, I was honestly, at the time that I bought it, the market was super hot. There was a lot of people moving down in this area. It's a very unique property. There's no other property around like this. Mm -hmm. And I really liked the house. I thought there was some value if I came in and made it more livable. And basically what happened is the interest rates went up and it killed the market, simple story. You know, we're not gonna make the money we anticipated on it, but that's life. Every asset is different. I gotta look at each asset. What's it worth? What can I sell it for? How much cash flow am I getting? If I sell it, I'm gonna have to go out and replace it or what's the tax ramifications gonna be? 
So there's a lot of moving parts to it. You know, the biggest thing with me is I should have realized, listen, I'll pay an extra point now for the interest rate and for the hundreds of millions of dollars that I owe, but paying an extra point now is better than paying an extra three points later. You know, the party was going on and I didn't know when the party was gonna be over. And here we are. For the first time in my life, I'm actually thinking about buying down debt, which I've never done in my life. I've always been a big advocate for taking on debt because the rate was low and it made a lot of sense to get a return making money on the bank's money. Well, we're not making money on the bank's money anymore. The returns are equal to the payments you're making to the bank. So basically, you're getting a modest return on the money you have invested. This is like living in heaven. When you, live, when you work right. here and live here, it's like being on vacation all the time. All right. You wanna take the elevator? Come sure. on in. All right. Do you think money could buy happiness? Yes. I mean, you know, it makes your life easier. You're not on this earth for that long. You wanna live as happy and as easy as you can. And if you like nicer things in life, money's gonna get them for you. I mean, so yeah, I believe money can buy happiness. Look at this, you want to read your clothes? Oh, wow. Have the clothes come to you. Oh my gosh. It's very 90s. There's only so much you could do before just you had to gut it and start over. But then you're, you're spending probably $3 million redoing it. I mean, you know, this is a true estate. Oh. The tennis court's brand new, the pool's brand new, the deck's brand wow. new. We even put a new fountain in. Um, button green over there. We'll walk around. I'll show you. Yeah. You, you can take. You can drive a golf cart all the way down to the waterfront. And next door, we all these houses here share a private marina. We have two boat slips and a brand new dock. I mean, you know, we all use the word luck, but you got to be at the right place at the right time with the ability to do a deal. That's all you need in real estate. Real estate is all about finding a deal. You're not going to sit on your ass and say, oh, I'm going to get lucky and find me a deal. Bullshit, it ain't going to happen. You got to find a deal. You got to call people. You got to look online. You got to do, you know, homework. You got to be like a dog sniffing out a deal. You got to be at the right place at the right time, but you got to put yourself at the right place at the right time. Me sitting in that hot tub right now, uh, is not going to get me a deal. Sitting in that office on my computer, that's going to get me a deal. So you create your own luck in life. Hit the like button, subscribe, and go to Ben Mala. Check my channel out. Listen, you want to buy a Mustang pool table, I'll give you a discount. Your mother sucks in hell. <laughs>